Merhaba arkadaşlar, birazdan başlayacağız. All right, let's start. Um, so today we're going to start a new topic. Uh, this is um, Laplace transform. We use Laplace transform to solve um, higher order equations. Hocam. Evet. Dersin başlamadan sınavla alakalı bir şey sorabilir miyim acaba? Um, İki haftaya muhtemelen bu altıncı chapter'ı da bitireceğiz ve ciddi miktarda konu olacak da sınavda takribi nereye kadar olacak onu merak etmiştim de ben. Sınav genelde son hafta dahil olmaz. Ama ondan öncesi de biraz daha geriye de gidebiliriz ama tam e, kararla başlamadık onu. Ama son hafta dahil olmaz. Ya hemen hemen, hemen seyrelere kadar o zaman. Ee, yani... Mesela bu hafta dahil olmayabilir Laplace transfer. Muhtemelen buraya kadar olur. Ama onu duyuracağız yani. Teşekkürler. Yani kararlaştırdım. Seriler dahil olur muhtemelen. Hocam ben de soru sorabilir evet. miyim sınavla ilgili? Tabii sor. Yine böyle online olacak değil mi? Evet, evet iyi ki gibi olacak. İlki gibi. Anladım. Tamam, evet. Yani midterm öyle olacak. Final yazılı olacak. Finalde klasik evet. sınav yapacağız. Çok All right, Laplace transform. This is six, chapter six in the book. Well, um, so suppose we have a function uh, f of t. It's a piecewise continuous function is a piecewise continuous uh, on the interval zero to infinity. Piecewise continuous means uh, on each interval, it's continuous. You may have discontinuity. It's like this. You have some like that, this, and so on, this, okay? Um, so you may have discontinuity points, but uh, each piece is a continuous function, okay? Um, then, uh, the Laplace transform is defined by the following. Uh, we will denote this by this fancy L, um, F of T. 
So basically you transform a function to another function by this formula. We will say this is f of s now, okay? It's a function of s now. And it's defined by the integral from zero to infinity e to the minus s t f of t dt. This is called uh, the Laplace transform. It's called the Laplace transform of f of t. Okay. Well, let's give some examples um, here. The easy example is, let us find, let's say f of t is the constant function one, okay? And uh, let's find the Laplace transform of this, L of one, it's uh, integral from zero to infinity e to the minus st times one, dt okay uh, well you can easily compute this integral it's e equal to e to the uh, minus st over minus s and t is from uh, zero to infinity this is an improper integral but it's convergent so uh, you can compute it well this is basically minus one over s uh, when you plug infinity it's going to be zero zero minus e to the zero is one. So you will get um, here one over s. But be careful here, when you do that, uh, s must be positive. Otherwise, this integral is not convergent, okay? Because if s is negative, e to the minus st will go to infinity and this will be divergent. So this is true if uh, S is positive, okay? So what you showed here is the you know, Laplace transform of one is equal to one over S. Okay, there's one question. Uh, well, we don't have minus sign in front of minus S because S because we have here, okay? Here we have minus one, all right? Um, so we, we get basically uh, uh, the Laplace transform of um, one, and maybe let's note here, um, the integral is divergent. Integral here is, is divergent when uh, s is uh, less than or equal to zero. Okay, any question? Okay, so minus sign is here in front of one. In front of one. All right, let's um, talk about more on Laplace transform. Well, the question is, do we, uh, have Laplace transform of any function? The answer is no. Let's write this as a remark. For some functions, you may not get a convergent uh, integral, so uh, you cannot write the Laplace transform. Uh, not all functions have a Laplace transform. Let me give an example. Um, here, for instance, uh, this function f of t, which is e to the 2t squared. If you try to compute the Laplace transform, let's do it. Uh, then integral L f of t will be integral 0 to infinity e to the minus st times e to the 2t squared, but uh, this is gonna be bigger than or equal uh, 
zero to infinity e to the t square. Okay, there's dt, dt here, so dt here. But uh, zero to infinity to the t square is divergent, okay, uh, which uh, implies basically um, here this function does e to the t two t square has no Laplace transform. Basically, if uh, if your function grows uh too much uh then it doesn't have a lot less transform here e to two t square when you go to infinity it converts to it diverges to infinity very fast that's why we uh, we don't have a lot less transform here so what guarantees the existence of lot less transform here's a theorem which says basically if your function if f of t grows like this, it's less than or equal k times e to the a t uh, for some k and a, okay, then uh, the Laplace transform exists, okay, which is f of s um, converge for all uh, for all s bigger than a okay so if it grows like this if it doesn't grow too too uh, too fast okay um, then uh, Laplace transform exists and it exists when s is bigger than a. Any questions so far? You can prove this, but I will not do it here. It's straightforward to use the definition of uh, Laplace transform. So maybe let's um, give some important uh, Laplace transforms, some Laplace transform of, of important functions. We will use it in this course. Um, ben bir şey sorabilir miyim? Tabii. Burada A ve S e, sayı değil mi? A ve S e, real sayı burada ama kompleks olarak ondan da bahsedeceğiz. Evet. Tamam, tamam hocam. Tamam Teşekkür olarak ederim. ondan bahsedeceğiz. Tamam. Uh, some examples let's say of Laplace transform uh, maybe before the examples let's give this remark um, here we can take s here as a complex number Okay, so the variable will be complex number for the transform. In that case, in that case, condition for convergence here, we had this, right, for all s bigger than a. Uh, in that case, uh, the condition for convergence is real s bigger than uh, well, A can be here complex number as well. Real S is bigger than real A, okay? A can be complex number as well. So in that case, instead of S is bigger than A, we use real S is bigger than real A. This again follows from the definition of Laplace transform. I will not give the details. So let's write some examples of Laplace transform. First, we just saw that Laplace transform of one is equal to one over S for uh, real S is bigger than zero, right? Uh, we had this, 
another one to, let's say, the Laplace transform of e to the a t is one over s minus a for real s is bigger than um, real a, let's say. Well, let's, let me give this as an exercise. Okay, show this, okay. This is an exercise for you. So try this yourself, write it, this Laplace transform as an integral and then compute this uh, improper integral, okay. Uh, next one, Laplace transform of uh, cosine at. Well, what is this? Maybe let's uh, do it here. Then we will write the formula. What is this? Well, you can do this directly with the formula or better way, uh, we can do the following. Uh, cosine at, you can write this as e to the i at plus e to the minus i at over two, okay? e to the i at is cosine at plus i times sine at, then the imaginary parts will vanish and you will get this, right? But this implies that uh, the Laplace transform of cosine at, a is here a complex number or real number, it doesn't make any difference. It's gonna be one over two. Uh, Laplace transform is additive uh, and you can write like this, Laplace transform of e to the i a t, uh, plus uh, Laplace transform of e to the minus i a t. Okay, but here number two gives the Laplace transform of the exponential function. Uh, so by number two, we use two here. It's going to be one over two. Uh, well, what was it? One over s minus a. One over s minus, here a is the coefficient of t, then it's gonna be the coefficient of t is a i, okay? i is the complex number i, plus one over s minus, minus a i, s plus a i, okay? But uh, when you sum up this two, you will get, you, you can do this yourself easily. It's gonna be S over S square plus A square. So we get that now the Laplace transform of cosine AT is S over S square plus A square. Well, uh, here we use the Laplace transform of e to the a i t and the, con the condition for convergence, remember, s is bigger than real, uh, real a. Okay, so here, um, We should say real S, this is true when real S, real part of S is bigger than real part of A, okay? Because we use the same here. Uh, we use this uh, Laplace transform of exponential to, to get Laplace transform of cosine. So the condition for convergence will be the same, okay? Is that clear? Well, let's do another one. Maybe let's just write it. Uh, in a similar way, you can show that Laplace transform of sine at is equal to 
e yokmuş. Evet, s square plus a square. Uh, here again, when real part of s is bigger than uh, real part of a. And this is an exercise for you. You can do what we did in the previous step, okay, in the previous one. It's quite similar exercise. Um, well, maybe uh, in this exercise, use the following. Uh, sine AT is equal to E to the um, I A T minus E to the minus I A T over uh, over two I. Okay. So use this formula to get the Laplace transform of sine A T. Any question so far? Var mı buraya kadar sorus? So these are some well-known Laplace transform and you should keep that in mind, okay? Bunları aklınızda tutmanız lazım. Çok çok kullanacağız. Bu en azından bu dördünü. Birkaç tane daha yazacağız. This one. This one. Okay? Well, let's continue. Number five, the Laplace transform of t to the n here. n is a natural number, like 0, 1, 2, and so on. It's n factorial over s to the n plus 1. Uh, again, the convergence is when convergence Convergence holds when real S is bigger than real S is bigger than um, zero, okay? When real S is bigger than zero, and for all n, natural number, natural number. Another important formula, you can derive this one as well using some integration by part. Uh, another one, well, now this is kind of a rule, an important rule here. Suppose that the Laplace transform of a function f is equal to capital F of s uh, for real part of s is bigger than k, then the Laplace transform of e to the a t f of t is equal to capital F s minus a. Okay, so when you multiply the function with the exponential e to the a t, then the Laplace transform will shift by a unit. And this again follows from the definition of Laplace transform. So what is the uh, domain of convergence here. Well, this is for real S is bigger than K plus real A, okay? This is another important formula when we deal with Laplace transform. Well, let's do, let's look at this one, number seven. Um, well, again, let's say, suppose, again, the Laplace transform of f of t is f of s, then when you multiply your function with t, t times f of t, 
then the Laplace transform of this function is equal to minus df ds, okay? So multiplying by t, uh, your function f, the Laplace transform is differentiated with respect to s, okay? So this is another important rule. Number eight. Well, the Laplace transform of again the same. Okay, so let's say uh, Laplace transform of f is equal to capital F, then Laplace transform of f of c t here. Okay, c is a constant. It's one over c times f of uh, s over c. All right. Um, well, we are done. Okay, there are many rules like this. Um, good news is these are very useful when we compute the Laplace transform. Bad news is you have to memorize all these rules. Okay. You have to memorize this eight, at least this eight rules um, of Laplace transform. Well, let's do some examples. Uh, we have f of t here, e to the minus 3t sine root 2t. What is the Laplace transform of this function? Okay, so this is the question. Well, we know the Laplace transform of sine. So let's write this first. Laplace transform of sine to t is a squared. A is here. This is your a. Okay. Remember, it was uh, a squared over a squared plus a squared. So, uh, so a over a squared plus a squared. So it's going to be root two over a squared plus a squared, which is two. So this is the Laplace transform of sine root t. But, but we multiply with e to the minus 3t then. So remember here, when you multiply with exponential, what is it? Here, number six. You shift the Laplace transform by a unit. So uh, we shift this. We use number six here. So Laplace transform of, let us say this is capital F of S, okay? So e to the minus three t sine root two t is F of S plus, S minus minus three. Let's write it like this, okay? S minus minus three. Right, like this. S plus three basically here. Okay, sorry about this. Okay, uh, so this is uh, F of S plus three. Uh, which, which is what, which is basically um, uh, what f of s is here, root two over s plus three square plus two. That's it. Any question with this example? One sort of question. Let's do another example. Now we have uh, f of t is uh, t squared times sine 3t. Okay. Um, 
So let's start with sine three t. Sine three t has Laplace transform as three over s square plus three square, which is nine, right? This is the Laplace transform of sine three t. Now we multiply with t square. We will do this one by one. First multiply with t <clears throat> and then multiply by t again, because remember when you multiply by t, number seven here says you take derivative with respect to s. So we use this, okay? So we use this twice. Now, if you use seven, okay, seven here, uh, Laplace transform of t times sine three t is if I say maybe. So let's say this is here f of s. Okay. So this is minus df over ds. You differentiate this with respect to s. So it's going to be, uh, well, you differentiate f of s with respect to s. So 3 is constant. Take it out. Uh, you can write like this 3 times minus 1 times. Uh, 2s over uh, s squared plus 9 squared, it's this, right? And there is also minus sign here, with, with minus sign, right? This one. Okay, so we get that basically, um, Six s over s square uh, plus nine square. Can d f over d s türevini almak demek değil mi? İntegralini almadık mı biz? Yok türev aldık. Şöyle düşündük, 3 çarpı s kare artı 9'un eksi birinci kuvveti değil mi bu? Tamam. Eksi 3 çarpı s kare artı 9'un eksi ikinci kuvveti çarpı. Okay. Alright. Um, this is t times Right, t times uh, sine three t. Now we will find this one L, L of t squared times. So you apply this number seven again. This uh, this function now. So let's say this is now g of s. Okay, g of s and uh, t squared sine three t is basically again by seven here minus dg over ds. Okay, we differentiate this with respect to s again. Okay, so this is going to be what? This is going to be um, minus, here's the product rule, minus six is out, let's say. One times uh, s squared plus nine squared uh, minus s times uh, two times s squared plus nine times two s over uh, s squared plus nine uh, to the fourth. Okay, so we get that. Any question? Var mı sorun? Hocam burada iki tane fonksiyon olduğu için mi böyle 
e, iki kere yeniden türev aldık. Ee, yani burada şunu yaptık. Hani t kareye gelebilmek için önce e, t ile çarptık. T ile çarptığın zaman bir kere türev oluyorsun. E, ama bizim istediğimiz t kare. T kareye ulaşmak için bir t ile daha çarptık. Bir t ile daha çarpmak demek bu sefer e, aynı kuraldan dolayı bunun s'ye göre türevini alıyorsun. Çünkü şöyle bir şey yok. İki tane fonksiyonun çarpımının Laplace transform, formunun genel bir kuralı yok. Yani işte tek arenin Laplace transformunu biliyoruz. Sinüsün de Laplace transformunu biliyoruz. Ama çarptığınız zaman Laplace transform çok başka bir şey olabilir. Ama burada t ile çarpmak özel bir durum. T ile çarptığın zaman diyor ki bu yedinci kural sağ tarafta türev alıyoruz. Multiplying by t Uh, is here easy because you simply differentiate uh, the Laplace transform. Okay. Anladım. Anladım. Hocam. Teşekkür ederim. All right. Um, well, the purpose of the Laplace transform, as I said at the beginning, uh, to solve some higher order differential equations. So let's see what happens when you apply Laplace transform to the derivative. This is 6.2 in the book. Laplace transform of a derivative. So derivative of a function is another function. So uh, we can talk about the Laplace transform of the derivative function. Uh, so let's see what happens when you apply the Laplace transform to a derivative. Well, so let's say you have f prime, and when you apply uh, Laplace transform to f prime, it's going to be uh, the Laplace transform of f times s, okay, s times this minus f of zero. Well, again, this follows from the uh, definition and integration by part. You can check this easily. Maybe let me give this as an exercise. Use uh, uh, here integration by part. In the definition of Laplace transform, okay? Well, Uh, so you see here, Laplace transform returns derivative to the original function. That's it's a good news because uh, when you apply Laplace transform to differential equation, it reduces the order. So when it reduces the order, the equation becomes simpler, right? Um, so let's see what happens when you apply Laplace transform to the second derivative. In that case, we will get s square l of f of t minus s of f zero, okay, minus uh, f prime of zero. So this is the formula when you apply to the second derivative. When you apply to the third derivative, You can guess now what happens. Like in the previous one, now we will have s cube l of f of t minus uh, s times s square times sorry, f of zero minus s times f prime f f prime of zero uh, minus uh, f double prime zero, okay? So this is what we have um, for the third derivative. Well, in general, in general, you can see that 
the Laplace transform of n to derivative of a function of t is s to the n n f of t plus s to the n minus one f of zero minus sorry, minus minus minus minus s to the n minus two. So you increase the order uh, f prime zero order of the derivative at zero. Okay. Uh, continue like this, uh, minus s n minus three f double prime zero. Okay. And finally, you go like that, minus f to the n minus first derivative at zero. Okay. we we'll get that. So this is very important rule because uh, we will apply Laplace transform to differential equation to reduce the order. And then using some well-known Laplace transform, we will solve the equation. So the idea here is maybe let's write the idea first then we will do an example. Apply. Sorry, can I ask a question before we can go forward? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sorry, no, no, no, no, no, no. This is my mistake. Everything is correct. Sorry. I got it. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, apply the Laplace transform to obtain to obtain this L of Y of T is equal to some function of S, okay? To and OD, let's say, ordinary differential equation. Well, then the solution to or D is given by Y of T. Y of T is the solution. So it's gonna be, it's like a, uh, the function and the inverse function. So Y of T will be the inverse Laplace transform of Y of S, okay? So we will call this as the inverse Laplace transform. We'll talk about this inverse. Laplace transform. Okay. Uh, there's one question. Uh, shouldn't we put Laplace sign in front of each? Um, uh, sorry, I forgot. Yes, yes, yes. This should be this one only. Yeah. This one only. We should have uh, S to the N like, like this one. Okay. Uh, Laplace transform of this. But in the rest, we don't have any 
any other lot loss, okay? Because F0 is a constant, okay? F0 is a constant, derivative is a constant also. Okay, thanks for this. All right, any other question or comment? Let's give a break here for 10 minutes and after the break, we will do an example, uh, to solve an equation with Laplace transform. So let's meet at uh, 11.40. Okay.
All right, uh, let's continue with the example. Any question? Var mı soru? Here's an example. Solve uh, the initial value problem. Initial value problem. Uh, y double prime minus five y prime plus four y is equal to cosine uh, 3t. Here, uh, initial values are y0 is equal to 2, y prime 0 is equal to 0 using Laplace transform. Well, of course, you can solve this with uh, variation of parameters, or um, you can guess the particular solution and solve the homogeneous equation and combine this two. You can solve it in different ways. Here, we will do it by Laplace transform. Okay, let's solve it. So we will apply the Laplace transform to both sides. Uh, Laplace transform of y double prime minus five y prime plus four y is equal to the Laplace transform of cosine three t. And let's say the Laplace transform of y of t is equal to y of s. So let's denote this by the Laplace transform by y of s for uh, simplicity, basically. So um, this tells you what this tells you basically the Laplace, you can separate, split the Laplace transform, Laplace transform of y double prime uh, minus five times. Laplace transform of y prime, okay, plus four times Laplace transform of y is equal to Laplace transform of cosine 3t. And remember the Laplace transform of cosine at, it's s over s squared plus 3 squared, which is 9, okay, so it's equal to that. All right, let's um, expand this Laplace transform on the left-hand side. This one, for instance, maybe let's do it like that. This one here, y double prime, by the rule it was uh, Laplace transform of y, which is y of s, okay? Uh, times s squared, right? s squared times this minus s times y zero, okay? Minus y prime zero. That was the formula for the Laplace transform for the second derivative, right? Uh, we do the similar thing for the other one here, this one. minus now five times the Laplace transform of y prime. So it's gonna be uh, s times y s, okay? Minus y zero, okay? 
So it is that one plus four times L of Y is basically Y of S. This is equal to S over, um, maybe let's do this with a different color. Well, here it's the red one, and this one here. Okay. All right. S over S squared plus nine. We get that. Hocam, bir şey söyleyeyim. Buradaki mavi işaretin içerisindeki y sıfır. Şey olan y sıfır yani fonksiyon olan y'si böyle Laplace transformun y'sinden gelen bir Hayır, şey. evet, doğru diyorsun doğru fonksiyon olan y'yi küçük y ile gösteriyorum Laplace transformu büyük y ile tamam o zaman peki mavinin içindeki büyük y mi olacak küçük y evet, yanlış olmuş yanlış olmuş ee... Haklısın. Şöyle önceki. Tamam. Güzel. Peki. Uh, şimdi. Let's write this value. So y0 is 2. So this is 2. Y prime 0 is 0. This is 2. And from this we get, we get basically Let's put this in YS parentheses. We will get um, S square, okay, uh, minus 5S plus 4, uh, minus 2S plus 10 is equal to s over s square plus nine, right? We get that. So let's write uh, the Laplace transform ys. This is basically um, s over s square plus nine, over s square minus 5s plus 4. This is one thing. The other thing is 2s minus 10. So 2s minus 10 over s square minus 5s plus 4. Okay, we get that. So this is the Laplace transform of the function. To find the function, we will apply the inverse Laplace transform. Well, um, to apply the inverse function, inverse Laplace transform, first we do the partial fraction. So we will uh, write, we will split this uh, products into sums, sum of some simple functions and it's easier to work with. What you can do is uh, when you apply the partial fraction, I will not do it uh, with details, but you can do yourself uh, like in the calculus, right? In calculus, we, we know how to do, uh, we learn how to do partial fraction. So it becomes the following, it's like, how do you write this? It's like A over uh, AS plus AS plus B over S square plus nine. This is the term corresponding to S square plus nine plus, uh, well, this one is, you can split as S minus four, S minus one. So it's like C over S minus four plus 
d over minus one. And then equalizing the denominators, you can find a, b, c, d here. And what you will get, let me write the result here. A will be uh, minus one over 50. Here, B will be minus nine over 50. C is four over 75. And D is here, minus one over 30. Okay. And this is an exercise for you. You can check this yourself. Equalize the denominators and find the coefficients of S and the constants. Okay. Uh, the other one here, this one. For this one, uh, what we can do is you can write it like again, a over s minus four plus b over s minus one. And from this, a is, a is equal to uh, minus two over three and b is equal to eight over three, okay? All right, so let's maybe write now uh, with fraction. So ys is equal to uh, minus one over 50 s over s squared plus nine, right? This is one thing, minus nine over 50, one over s squared plus nine. Let's continue with the next, plus four over 75, one over s minus four, minus one over 30, one over s minus one, okay? And let's continue with the other term, minus two over three, minus two over three, one over S minus four, and B here, eight over three, eight over three, one over S minus one, right? This is the Laplace transform of the function. Well, what I will do is basically, I will take the inverse Laplace transform. So basically we will take the inverse. Inverse Laplace transform of this, which is, y of t will be the inverse Laplace transform of each of them. So it's like you take the inverse Laplace transform of this, inverse Laplace transform of this, and all okay like that. This. All right. I remember the rule here. Maybe let's write on a side. If L of yt is equal to f of s, this implies the inverse f of s is equal to y of t, like the inverse function. Okay. So we use this property here. Okay, let's continue now. The first one here. Let's take this up 
here. The first one here is uh, S over S squared plus nine minus one over 50. So for which function we have Laplace transform is equal to S over S squared plus nine. Any guess? Yani şunun, şunun hangi fonksiyonun Laplace transformu S bölü S kare artı dokuzdur diye soruyor. Cosinus treaty. Cos, right, this is cosine treaty. Good. Cosine treaty as Laplace transform S over S squared plus nine. So inverse Laplace is equal to this. Okay, uh, let's continue with the next one. Next one here is one over S squared plus nine. Now this is about sine function, sine three T, three over, right? So you can write this like, instead of writing like, writing like this, we can write like three here and three here, okay? So inside here we have, uh, sine three t, so it's going to be minus three over fifty sine three t. Okay. The next one here is four over. Here we are at this point. Okay. This one. Four over twenty five. How do you obtain one over S minus four? Any guess? E to the 40. Right, E to the 40, good. E to the 40, okay. Uh, next one minus, here we're at this point. One over, 30 e to the t now, okay. Um, next one, this here. It's now minus two over three e to the 40 again, plus the last one here, this one, a over three, e to the t, okay? And we are done, this is y of t, the solution, okay? Any question with this example? Var mı bununla ilgili soru arkadaşlar? All right, let's do one more example. Hocam ben bir şey sorabilir miyim? Tabii. Bunu da undetermined coefficient yapsak. Kosinüsü A cos 3T, B sin 3T diye desek. Hı -hı. Finalde E ile ifade nereden gelecek? Ee, homogeneous kısmın çözümünden gelecek. Önce homogeneous çözümü yapıyorsun değil mi? Yani şunu çözüyorsun. That's a good question. Maybe we could analyze this. So first you solve this is equal to zero. Homogeneous kısmı çözdün. Orada kökler ne geliyor mesela burada? Ee, R kare x 4 ile bir e üzeri 4 t e üzeri t bakalım here we have e to the 40 e to the t you can combine this right this one and this one right in a single form so these are the solutions for the homogeneous equation y h okay and the particular solution is this one
Teşekkürler. Good. Uh, any other question? All right, let's do this example. Uh, so the IVP initial value problem, uh, y triple derivative, third derivative minus y is equal to one. Uh, here, y zero is equal to y prime zero is equal to y uh, second derivative at zero. They are all zero, okay? Let us do this. Well, again, we apply here uh, Laplace transform. So L of Y third derivative minus Y is equal to L of one. L of one is one over S, right? Uh, we can expand this, this is the, third derivative here minus L of Y. Well, again, uh, this side here is what? S cube Y S minus S squared Y zero minus S Y prime zero, okay? minus y double prime zero okay this was the formula and we have for from this we have uh, minus y of s is equal to one over s well initial values are all zero so this is zero this is zero this is zero and what is left here we are left with uh, in ys parentheses s cube minus one is equal to one over s, or you can write um, from here ys is equal to uh, one over s times s cube minus one. Again, we do the partial fraction to find the inverse Laplace of the right hand side. Um, so one over s s cube minus one. Um, s cube minus one is basically s minus one times s square plus s plus one right you can expand like this so it's going to be a over s plus b over s minus one plus c s plus d over s square plus s plus one s square plus s plus one is irreducible component remember in that case uh, you have uh, degree one polynomial on the top, Cs plus T. And from this, you can find A, B, C, D. I will not do it in the long way. You can check this yourself. Here, A will be minus one, B will be one over three, C will be two over three, and D is one over three. That means basically uh, Y of T, is the inverse of y of s, which is uh, minus l inverse one over s plus one over three l inverse one over s minus one plus 
uh, 2 over 3 L inverse uh, Well, you can write it like this, but maybe it's uh, better to work like this. Maybe we can complete this to a square. Otherwise, it will be difficult. So if I take, for instance, uh, 2 over 3 parentheses, you will get what? 2 over 3 is out. Uh, it's going to be. L inverse, okay, uh, S plus one over two over one over two, sorry, one over two, okay, S plus one over two. Well, in the bottom we have s squared plus s plus one, we can write it like this s plus one over two square. It's s squared plus s plus one over four, but we have one, so you will add uh, three over four to get one. So we write it like this because now it's easier to work with. Here, see that we have s plus one over two on the top and bottom. Okay, um, so this is what, this is basically, well, the first two terms are easy. So this one here, for instance, uh, one, right? Minus one. Hocam. Evet. D'yi 1 bölü 3 bulmamış mıydık? Neden 1 bölü 2 yazdık? Esas 1 bölü 2. 1 bölü 3, şu ikisini çarpınca 1 bölü 3 yapıyor ya. Okay. 2 bölü 3 parantezini aldık. S'i S olarak bırakmak için 2 bölü 3'ü dışarı attık. Oldu mu? Tamam. Teşekkürler. Okay. Uh, this one here is 1 over 3 e to the t. So these are easy. Okay. Um, what about the rest? Well, forget about one over two first, because one over two is here, like you shift your uh, transform by um, minus one over two, right? Uh, so it's gonna be like, what is the inverse transform of S over S squared plus three over four? Let's first find this, this is, it's about cosine, right? Cosine um, root three over two, because we have three over four, t. Uh, the inverse, the Laplace transform of this is s over s squared plus t over four. Okay, fine. Uh, well, but we need a shift here, so this implies basically L inverse, you shift by one over two, so e to the minus t over two times, uh, oh no, sorry. S plus one over two, 2 over s squared plus 3 over 4 uh, s plus shifted 1 over 2 s plus 1 over 2 square plus 3 over 4 okay so shift by uh, minus one over two. It's gonna be e to the minus two t over two minus one over two times t times cosine 
root 3 over 2 t, right? Remember this shifting of rule, right? When you multiply with e to the a t, you shift by 1 over uh, a, you shift by a, and here a is minus 1 over 2. Um, so basically, when you combine all this, we get y of t is equal to minus 1 plus 1 over 3e e to the t, okay, plus 2 over 3e e to the minus t over 2 cosine this, okay? All right, any question with this? Yes, can we go a little bit upper? Uh, I have the question right at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, somehow, we, yeah, yeah, here. We got 1 divided by S. Uh, yeah. My question is, how did we get it, 1 divided by S? Uh, it's the Laplace transform of 1. Right? The Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over S. Ah, okay, yes, I see. Thank you. You remember in the first lecture? Hocam, ben de ufacık bir soru sorabilir miyim? Burada mesela bu soruyu Laplace'la çözeceğimizi anladı. Çünkü IVP'de mesela üçüncü türevin ne olduğu verilmemiş bize. Hani bir tane indirilmiş zaten. Yok ama zaten IVP'de bu kadar condition verilir. Bir eksik verilir. Üç tane, evet, üç tane condition. Üç tane condition var. Üçüncü dereceden değil mi? Onda problem yok ama Ha, burada şey, başka türlü yani we could solve this in different ways. We could uh, do, for instance, if you find the homogeneous solution, homogeneous equation, then find a particular solution and combine it. You can also do it. Uh, yani burada tabii şey değil, yani burada Laplace'la uh, uğraştığımız için şu an Laplace'ı uyguladık. Tek sebebi o. Parantik equation'dan da ve böyle... Tabii tabii, olur olur. Using Laplace. Şimdi Laplace transform. Şimdi Laplace transform esas e, güzelliği biraz sonra bahsedeceğiz. So the importance of Laplace transform is maybe uh, we could apply, we could solve Laplace transform when the right hand side here is not a continuous function, uh, but it's like piecewise continuous function. In that case, uh, Laplace transform is the only way you can apply uh, and you cannot do undetermined coefficients or anything like that, okay? And when the right-hand side is discontinuous function, in that case, Laplace transform is very useful. Uh, we will do some examples, okay? But here we could uh, solve this equation in different ways. You can uh, do uh, variation of parameters or even easier because right hand side is a constant. You can easily find a particular solution here uh, in the constant form. Um, okay. Uh, here the particular solution is minus one, right? When y is equal to minus one, it gives a particular solution. So you can use it. And solve the homogeneous part and sum up this two, you will get the, uh, you will get this one here. This part, you can also see here, this is particular solution. Particular solution. And this part is, uh, this is uh, homogeneous, homogeneous part, okay? All right, uh, any other question? Well, okay, then let's uh, do what? Let's talk about step functions and now we will consider uh, differential equations with right hand side is not a continuous function. For this purpose, we will introduce uh, step functions. This is 6.3. Uh, 
uh, step functions. Okay. So as I said, maybe let's write here Laplace transform. is uh, especially useful when the right hand side of the equation is discontinuous the right hand side of the ODE is uh, this continuous function. In that case, uh, we express the right hand side in terms of basic functions. These are called step step functions. Okay, so when the right hand side is a discontinuous function, you modify it uh, and write it uh, as a combination of step functions. Uh, step functions are easier to work, okay? Um, so in that case, we express the right hand side. in terms of basic functions called uh, step functions. Uh, well, what's a step function? Let's define this. So suppose that C is positive, then the unit step function at T is equal to C is UC T. We will denote by UC T here. It's a function of T and it is zero if T is less than C and one if T is greater than or equal C. Okay, so maybe let's graph it. It's uh, like this. Uh, C is somewhere here, okay? When T is uh, greater than C, it is one. Oops. This, other, other than this, it is zero. Okay, so this is your UCT. Well, the nice thing is uh, when you have a piecewise continuous function, you can express this piecewise continuous function in terms of the step function. So this is a fact, maybe let me write here a fact, an important fact, we will use it later. So let G of T be a piecewise uh, continuous function given by G of T, it's H1T 
if T is less than C1, it's H2T. If T is less than C2, greater than or equal C1, and you continue like that. Okay. And so you may have several uh, pieces. Okay. And in that case, you can write G T S H1 T plus the step function at C1, UC1, T, H2 minus H1, H1, T. Okay, let's continue. U sub C2, T, H3 minus H2. And you continue like that. Okay. So this you can represent your G with step functions in this form. Okay. This is very important when we deal with piecewise continuous on the right hand side of the equation, uh, the differential equation. Uh, let's do one example. So let's say we have g of t as zero if t is less than two, it's t minus two if t is between three and two, five minus t if uh, this here, if t is greater or equal four. So we get basically then g of t well remember the first function is h1 so this maybe I should say here this is h1 this is H2, here is H3 and H4, okay? So H1 is zero, so you start with zero. Next, you C1, what is C1 here? C1 is here two, right? This is C1, C2, two, three, C3, and C4, zero plus U2 T, H2 minus H1, H2 minus, uh, right? It's H2 minus H1 is basically T minus two plus U3 T, Right, because C2 is three now. H3 minus H2, so it's gonna be five minus T minus T minus two. Yes. Let's continue with the uh, last one. So U four, T, H4 minus H3, so it's gonna be zero minus five minus T, okay? So you can write G of T by this 
simple formula. Well, the question is why do we do that? The reason is, remember, when you have an equation like this, on the right-hand side, we have a discontinuous function. Uh, we will find the Laplace transform, and the Laplace transform of the step function is quite easy. And here you find the Laplace transform of G after you write like this. You can easily find the Laplace transform of G using the Laplace transform of step function U C T. Uh, did I miss something? U uh, okay, this is U4, sorry, not U5. C4 is four, there's no five. Here. It's a typo, this should be four. Yeah, thanks. Okay, because C4 is four, so you C4. Okay, so, uh, so let's find the Laplace transform of UCT. Can U1-dan niye başlamadık? Um, çünkü C1 2 2'ye eşit değil mi? Yani UC1'dan başladık değil mi? Ha evet hocam tamam. C1 A1 1 2 3 değil gitmiyor. C1 C2 C3 diye gidiyor. Tamam. It's UC1 UC2 and so on. Okay. So let's find Laplace transform of U C T. It's basically this U C T is zero to infinity um, U C T e to the minus st dt. But remember UCT, uh, up to c it is zero, and then it becomes one. So you can write this as um, from c to infinity e to the minus st dt, right? Because UCT is zero up to c, and after c it is, one, so the integral becomes this, and this integral is basically um, e to the minus s t over minus s. Here t is from c to infinity, uh, and it, it's basically. Uh, when you plug infinity, here S is positive. We, we assume that S is positive. So when you plug infinity, you will get zero. And when you plug C, it's going to be e to the minus SC. So it's going to be uh, e to the minus C times S over S. Here we assume that real part of S is positive. Okay, so we find out that Laplace transform of UCT is equal to e to the minus C times S over S. And using this, you can find the Laplace transform of G because uh, multiplying by T is basically you differentiate, right? Um, we, we use these rules in the first lecture to find uh, the Laplace transform of G here. Uh, we will do some examples uh, next time. So let's stop here. Any question? Var mı soru arkadaşlar? Peki. O zaman cuma günü görüşürüz. İyi günler hepinize. İyi günler hocam.